if you're comfortable and you feel like I, I deserve to be here, uh, I have a purpose. I'm actually spreading um, a kind of a magical vibration in the world and in the universe by even thinking about playing music, playing a nature-based wind instrument and spending time outside. Uh, that is a, all of benefit, not just to you, but to, 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 to all beings. <laughs> This is a distilled, basic return to the root practice. You're going to be communing with the elemental materials around you, not through a great deal of effort, just because that's how it works when you start breathing and you get the tones resonating. Find a spot and go for it. That's all the video really needs to say. The important but largely neglected topic of outdoor practice or playing outside. The shakuhachi is a nature-based non-mechanical wind instrument. Uh, as I sometimes like to say, it's not about nature or connecting with nature, it is nature. So at the beginning of our motivation for playing shakuhachi, many of us have that motivation, that internal pull to go outside and play the instrument. And the pieces of the Zen Buddhist Honkyoku repertoire are often nature oriented, nature and Buddhist psychology in terms of their titles and their origins. And a lot of the lore and um, the kind of uh, atmosphere around which uh, many of us first learn about the instrument. It might have um, a Japanese uh, flavor to it also, but within that and above that is this greater nature piece, landscape, and this broadens it out to the uh, rivers and mountains practices of the Taoists and early Chan Buddhists in China. So whether it's by the stream, the river, the waterfall, a cliff, the woods, uh, the flutes like to be played outside. And it, in my 22 years uh, now playing shakuhachi, I've found that it's a, it's a vital part of your practice, um, of your practice, period. But we could say of your regime or your um, practice schedule. Let's think about this in um, the nuts and bolts, the where and how, the what, and the why. The where and how um, mean where are you going to go? So this is Frick Park in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where I currently live. It's a beautiful park. It is surrounded still by roads and uh, there's plenty of air traffic and there's a, a fair amount of air pollution very frequently. However, um, the forest itself is very beautiful, filled with little critters. And there's little pathways, like this is a kind of a walking and mountain bike pathway. So that brings up my first two, where, where just pick a place and try it. Wander around until you find somewhere that kind of feels comfortable. Number one, make sure you can breathe the air. Number two, get off of the main path. Um, Number three, you're going to need to be okay with people walking by and uh, maybe commenting or stopping and watching. Um, we'll cover more about the psychology in the why, why you would play outside, which is obvious, but we can go deeper with that. Um, uh, mosquitoes, that's sometimes uh, a challenge, so you got to kind of scope that out. You could stand, you could sit, you could just put your stuff on the ground. Uh, it, it's not, you know, direct sun can get pretty um, intense after a while. So a little bit of shade is really helpful. Um, be comfortable taking the flute you brought outside, playing outside, whatever the weather is. Uh, if you have a hardier flute, uh, some of you I know like to play your 
uh, false material, non-natural flutes because they're so quote unquote uh, indestructible. But if you think about it, that kind of takes a piece of the nature uh, right out of the equation. So try to take something that's a little less of a high um, replacement value to you um, or something that you know is, is a hardier bamboo. Um, and uh, so be comfortable with what you bring out. Uh, th those are kind of the basics. You could stay for five minutes, you could stay for five hours. If so, you're gonna wanna bring snacks and tea or a beverage. Uh, so let's move on to what? What should you play when you go, when you go to play outside? The self-consciousness can really get on top of you in the early days when you're a beginner. Uh, I'm gonna talk about that in, in the why segment, but then that, that feeds back into the what. Tones, you know, don't worry about repertoire, don't worry about I'm gonna play a honkyoku, I'm gonna play a folk song. Um, just get your posture and your breathing going and get any kind of sound with you and the flute. This is, this is a distilled, basic, return to the root practice. You're gonna be communing with the elemental materials around you, not through a great deal of effort, just because that's how it works when you start breathing and you get the tones resonating. Leave spaces, see what the acoustics are, but don't expect great acoustics. Playing outside is not about finding echo. Uh, if you do, that's great. That can be an extra bonus. You're on a little bit of a ravine or a hillside or a cliff face in the mountains. It's about you and your connection to the bamboo. You and your connection to the flute is at the center of my ethos. And that goes for all the wind instruments I have played, but natural bore, wide bore, large jinashi, shakuhachi are the best at getting me into that space. And it might be true for you as well. So you can certainly run a repertoire that you have memorized. I would encourage you to only bring music out if you're going outside to practice. Say, I got to work on this, this piece. I know a good place to go to, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, improvisation, short pieces, pilgrim hymns, uh, a little bit of honkyoku and let yourself get lost. Improvise around the phrases and types of uh, honkyoku. Sustains are great. Um, practice high and low registers, uh, but don't favor one or the other. See, see what the difference is and how it travels through the air. Okay, let's move on to why. I've already covered that a little bit. You're actually communing. This is a magical practice. This is a nature-based animistic practice. According to my intuitive, uh, intuitional history of woodwinding, uh, this is at the center of it. It might've been indoor practice originally, but it would have been indoor in a cave, which is a lot more nature-based than indoor in a condominium. Uh, so, it's, it's vital to connect to, that, to the outdoor air, the outdoor atmosphere and the, out, the land. Um, all of the influences, all the same reasons that it's healthy and good for you to get out and just walk or hike or sit are compounded for, for playing outside. Uh, now, if you don't play shakuhachi, you, you, you could also take that um, ethic and it would probably be beneficial, but it might feel a little more awkward now, speaking of feeling awkward, let's return to this self-consciousness piece. I know from direct experience how self-conscious you can be going outside and playing. 
And there are a, there's a long list of reasons that that arrives, but it all reduces to about the same thing. You're embarrassed someone's gonna judge you, A, or B, you're worried you're gonna disturb somebody. So let's start with the second one. Uh, we live in a machine world. So people can show up on the street with a jackhammer at 7, 7.30 a.m. And that's, that's legal. No one's gonna stop them. Uh, that's a much bigger disturbance than a, than a little woodwind in the woods. And I say this very seriously because a lot of my students over the years are paranoid about practicing in their apartments, practicing with their window open. Um, that's insane when you look at it really. What people are attacking if they ask you to quiet down or stop playing is you personally, actually. I take it very personally because there's an agency there. There's a person who's singing or making music or even listening to music that somebody else can take issue with. If you show up with a weed whacker, a chainsaw, a lawnmower, uh, an idling truck, a backing up truck, a, a jackhammer, the list goes on and on. Everybody just kind of shrugs and said that, says that's the way it is. Well, it's, it's, it's too much. We've gone way, way too far with machines almost everywhere you go. Um, and if you don't believe me, plan to do a nature-based, improvisational, one-take, outdoor album outside on Shakuhachi. You will have a very hard time finding somewhere you can get 10 contiguous minutes without a motorcycle or an airplane or um, even, even, in, even in remote places, there will be airplanes. So you're not gonna disturb anybody. People love it. People are always complimenting the sound and it doesn't even matter if you suck. Uh, you could get, you could get you know, one out, of, one out of four tries, you make a sound and um, it's, it's appropriate. Most people feel like it's appropriate and a lot of it's your state of mind. If you're comfortable and you feel like I, I deserve to be here, uh, I have a purpose. I'm actually spreading um, a kind of a magical vibration in the world and in the universe by even thinking about playing music, playing a nature-based wind instrument and spending time outside. Uh, that is a, all of benefit, not just to you, but to, 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 to all beings, let's say. So that's, that's my ethic around that, but it will take time to get comfortable in, in actuality. And some places, if you're uncomfortable, maybe you shouldn't be there. Maybe there's something, um, the land energies, ley lines, it could be anything. Maybe there's a, a nest of hornets right under the stump and they're gonna attack you if you start playing. So just move on and try another spot. It's, it's a lot of trial and, trial and error and being patient and, and really releasing yourself from expectations. Uh, and then the first part that they're gonna judge you for, for because maybe you, don't, you can't play um, nobody knows what, what shakuhachi is supposed to sound like. You know, let's say this is all that happens. Just situate yourself within your abdomen, return to the root of your own being, take the next inhale, commit to the, ne to the next exhale, and it really is all good. And you don't know what will happen next. Often the analytical mind or the small self, as we sometimes call it, will drop away when you get to the woods. Uh, but as soon as you start doing something that's a familiar activity, uh, and, and one that you use your analytical mind to assist in your training, it, it'll come back in full force. It'll, it'll, it'll start squeezing for results or doing things right, or j just really try to let that uh, f fall away or go over to the side. Um, in meditation where people say, oh, let, let the thoughts arise and let them pass away, that instruction doesn't really work f for me. So I'm not gonna echo that one here, but it is something like that, something like that that works for you. You don't get rid of the thought, you just grow around the thought. You get more spacious than your judgment or self-consciousness. You, you go around it, it it'll, it'll go away. It'll go away in the short term, it'll go away certainly after a couple of years. 
And meanwhile, the benefits are happening even if you're preoccupied with being self-conscious. So find a spot and go for it. That's all the video really needs to say.